Good afternoon, Tony Dottino here, founder of the USA Memory Championship and the president of Dottino Consulting Group. And as we are going through uh, getting our preps ready for the 23rd USA Memory Championship on October 1st here at Folsale University in Winter Park, Florida, we're getting a lot of interest and request over what the events will be and uh, how long they will be and who's competing. And so we're sending people to the USA Memory Championship website and we'll, we'll have the postings of all of our top mental athletes and who's going to be competing. And the events that we have uh, will start uh, with uh, what we call words to remember. They'll have several hundred words that they'll have to remember for recall and they'll get 15 minutes to do that. They'll go off stage and then we'll come back and they go head to head until we have uh, several people miss a word and then they're eliminated and we go on to the next event, which is the one that brings me to today's uh, uh, Live with Tony. And that is, help me remember people's names with their face. And it's always interesting to me that when we talk to people about, well, what's the first thing that you think of when you're meeting somebody? And usually the answer is, this, well, gee, what am I going to say to them? Am I going to say hello? Am I going to say, hey, from the last time? What do I remember from the last time I see them? And I said, well, there's the first challenge you've got. The first thing you should learn to remember in post conversations with people is walking away and at least repeating their name a few times to yourself. Hey, that was Mary. Mary, uh, Mary, Mary Carpenter that I remember seeing when I was in the grocery store last time. Or that was Megan, I, you know, Megan Cafferty. I remember seeing Megan, she was at the front desk and she helped me with a couple of, of uh, grocery items I had a problem with and she was just so helpful. But when I go out, I want to remember Megan and I remember seeing her name tag and it was M-E-G-H-A-N, Megan. M-E-G-H-A-N, so that was unique, so I kind of recall that. And then the next time I went into the store, I kind of got a quick glance, it's Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N, and hey, Megan, good, good afternoon, it's good to see you. What, what, what's a good sale item today? And she's talking to me about a uh, dozen roses that they're putting up in front of the store. They're just gorgeous. And there's Megan trying to help me. He says, Mr. Tony, is there anything? Now she remembered my name. So, wow, so she made the point, and I'm watching her. As people come into the store that obviously have been there a few times, she's remembering their name. So the first thing that I tell people is the first thing, you know, the, the initial thing that you want to focus on is a person's name. And then notice what I did with Megan. I went to the spelling of it, and it's M-E-G-H-A-N, which was unique in itself. So Megan, M-E-G-H-A-N, as I spell it out, each letter or each in print of her spelling of her name, puts another link into my brain. So spelling a person's name back to them, repeating it then. So, hey, Megan, did I spell that right? That's, you got an H in that, man. Or, uh, uh, or giving them the chance to say, I listen to you. Uh, I want to spell your name correctly because I want to remember it. So my priority in the conversation is really to remember the person's name that I'm speaking with, and if I can, spell it in a very polite way. I've never ever, even with Jim, J-I-M, hey, is that Jim with the capital J with I-M, small I-M? And people have never ever been offended by that. So we're doing some work and revising in our Maximum Memory Online course to updating uh, with a, a little bit of extra practice and exercises for people. Uh, how do you remember uh, a person's name now? First thing you want to do is look at features in their face. We always think about that. What are unique features in people's faces? Okay, mine is my nose. I wouldn't use a mustache because I don't know, someday I may just get to shaving it off. I, I'm not always sure if I'm hair, especially if it's a female. Hairstyles are constantly changing. But I'm looking for what are unique faces? Are there uh, molds or, uh, or permanent markings on a face? What might their chin look like? Anything unique about their uh, cheeks that, that might be memorable to that particular person. Now, I'm not staring at them, but I'm trying to notice, is there something unique about them? And sometimes you see some like, like little cute noses and you see some very interesting eyebrows and 
you'll get to see some very uh, fascinating lips on, on people. Uh, and the cheeks are always interesting and jaw bones and stuff. So you're going to gently, uh, nicely just look at a person's face and see if there's some feature that you can grab. Now, why do you want to do that? Because you then want to take the name and you want to link it back to that feature and make up this little story. And so, so now you've got their name, you've repeated it to them, you've spelt it back to them. And now you want to just do a quick little story as you're walking away saying, okay, what was the feature that I noticed? And so in Megan's case, I noticed a very, very uh, you know, nice, it's got very nice lips and she's very clear in terms of how she, she speaks to you. So I'm always focused when she's talking to me, I'm looking at her face and her mouth seems to be uh, the th thing that uh, uh, comes to my mind. Now, what do I do with Megan? Well, the, I, it's funny, you can sometimes do this, but I, I put a, a peg, I think of a golf peg, in a hand, a, pe a golf peg, so I think peg hand, peg hand in her mouth. Except I realized, well, M comes before P, so I gotta get M, Meg hand, in her mouth when I see her. So I can quickly just make up a By the way, these stories are silly. They don't don't get serious with this stuff. So a peg turning into M before P uh, with a Meg from the peg and a hand putting it in her mouth. There's Megan just looking at her mouth, just pops back up into my mind. Now, I tell people it, it, when you study and you start to do some of these things, have fun with this. You can break up names. There's different connections that you can make. Maybe there's people that you know who are Megan. You can just put them side by side. But there's a whole verse of, of different ways that you can do this, which we will be putting into the update on the uh, maximum memory. And then what we're being coached on by our marketing guru is pull that module out and send that out as a separate offering just within itself. So that for anyone that's really hard pressed to remember names, especially in the day we're in today where more and more people are networking for the job, they're meeting people, they're going to activities to try to network and find openings and companies and positions. Uh, remembering people's names would be one of the most important things that you could do, especially if you're in a, in a job hunt of some sort. Uh, there's nothing you can you know, say to a person that makes them feel more important than the fact that you took the time to focus, spell their name if you met them there, or recall their name, and as soon as you meet them, greet them with their, at least their first name. And then from there, what, what your brain will naturally do, and this is where people have a hard time thinking about this, it will naturally link back to something you discussed. So the next time I see Megan at the, at the supermarket, uh, I guess what I'm going to see in her holding in her hands is the, the 12 uh, long stem roses that they were selling at the store that she was trying to have me take home to my loved one, except my loved one's in New York right now and I'm in Florida. So I said to Megan, you know, uh, not this time around, but they are gorgeous. So what did I do? I took a picture of the whole display and sent it off to Evelyn in New York. And she absolutely loved the picture and knew that I was thinking about her as I was in the grocery store. Uh, during my uh, weekend shopping. So you can have fun with these things. And this is what I try to tell people. You don't have to make this tedious, laborious, and like, oh, you know, just enjoy these things. Learn something in the process. Learn something about the people that you meet. And uh, actually, when I, I was uh, in this time with, with Megan, uh, and she's always been friendly, I go pick up the Sunday New York Post at the store, and she saves it for me. It's got my name on it. She's, has she coached anybody that's at the front desk when she's not there? That, hey, when Tony comes in, and she'd be by nine o'clock uh, on a Sunday morning. The store is mostly empty, which is when I like to shop, uh, especially during the COVID uh, era. And uh, she just I can't do enough. So what did I do this time around? I asked to see her manager. And I wanted to compliment her on all of the good things that she has done during the course of serving me and asked the manager, hey, um, when is she up for a promotion? Let me tell you what service she provides and the connection she makes with the customers coming into the store. And Megan was quick to point out that this is only a new manager here at the store for one week. And it was his idea to set up this whole display of roses 
And we're, we're one of the top selling stores for roses this year in the country. It's like, oh, I'll remember all of that, except I need to remember the store manager, assistant manager's name, because that was one day I didn't lock out. All right, with that, it's a good off and start to Monday. Uh, stay tuned for my next Live with Tony on Wednesday, and uh, have a good week. We're in the middle of a thunderstorm, so I got away from the pool and uh, thought I'd do an early uh, Live with Tony since I need to go to the bank and hopefully remember some names when I go there today. Have a good week.